So what a great opening we had today. Amazing words. So it's hard to follow. Hard to come after those uh, presentations to hear. But uh, as we know, as we know here, we, we are the one who know and we have to pass that information to the wider society. So how to engage biodiversity, business on biodiversity, and what is the role of governments and national business and biodiversity platforms? This is uh, the theme for our session here today. So we heard that uh, we won't be able to make their uh, current global uh, IT targets. And we are now heading to the next COP to the Kunming next year. So we need to scale up now. We need to raise ambition level. And we have to have those proposals on the table today. Um, soon we will hear uh, how to explore um, how governments and platforms uh, can support this business engagement and further engage business sectors and even beyond their uh, co coalition of the willing. We, we have experience from, let's say, past uh, 10 years how to col collaborate with the business and now we have to sum up that information and scale up. Um, so we will be having here today uh, a keynote presentation and um, after that we have some Slido uh, questions to you. And the um, third part of uh, this is a long conversation and I will ask uh, my guests to be on there um, here with me. And uh, then we have a last Slidos to wrap up. So that is the program for one, this session. And uh, first of all, I would like to call uh, Martin Locke from Natural Capital Coalition uh, to have us this uh, keynote presentation. Thank, thank you very much, uh, Christina, and uh, thank you for, for inviting me. Although you can already see on the slide that it was not me who was meant to be here. <laughs> so. Uh, it was uh, uh, Mark van Oorschot, a great friend from the Environmental Planning Agency in the Netherlands, who uh, prepared a wonderful uh, slide deck and presentation, uh, because he's also preparing a very interesting report on uh, what businesses really are doing in the Netherlands around biodiversity. And, uh, but unfortunately, because of family circumstances, he had to be somewhere else uh, uh, today. So he, uh, he asked me to step in, which is uh, an honor and also a pleasure because now I can present a sci science-based report without all the detailed knowledge on that. So that's kind of fun and exciting. I hope you don't have too difficult questions for me. I won't have the answers, but at the end of the presentation, there's Mark's email address and photo. So you, you will see him at, at the end and also f find a way to contact him if you have questions. So here are the, ma the main subjects of, of the report is, a, is about how does the economic sector really link to biodiversity? What are they doing in, in, real, in the real world uh, on their impacts and dependencies on, on mitigation? Uh, what kind of responses do we see uh, in, in the Netherlands? It's based on an inventory of Dutch companies uh, a group of uh, around 35, and what are the business commitments uh, uh, that we see um, arising. And three main points I want uh, to highlight coming out of this report. It's first of all that it's clear that companies use very different strategies to integrate uh, biodiversity and natural capital uh, into their business models. And uh, uh, that these strategies are dynamic and what they are doing, 
really uh, depends on the internal leadership and the external incentives uh, that are around. And last but not least, and I think this is the most important um, uh, recommendations coming from the Environmental Planning Agency in the Netherlands to the Dutch uh, government, that the government in the Netherlands needs to consider different motivations uh, uh, for business models, but also as an effect of, of that, different approaches. So they have to uh, develop a broader suite of action from the government side. So this already has uh, been uh, talked over a lot post two uh, 2020 targets for biodiversity. And the key element here, I think, is uh, what can business do to integrate it into their business models? We already heard a lot about natural capital accounting and uh, these kind of uh, uh, measures. And the, the follow-up question, what can governments uh, uh, do to promote uh, that business really take this forward? So this is an element in the report of um, uh, PBL. Uh, by the way, this report will be published by the end of this year. So go to their website if you're interested uh, in, in the more details. And what you see here is that uh, a business really is part, uh, a part of the problem, especially if you take also into account uh, the imports. So for the food and beverage sector, you see that it's the import, so the supply chain that really is a big part of, of the problem. And uh, uh, also for the Netherlands, the high impact uh, sectors really are food and beverages and, uh, and energy. At the same time, business is also part of, uh, uh, of the solutions and the mitigation hierarchy uh, that business can use uh, to uh, um, move towards a no net loss situation really is a helpful instrument, has proven to be helpful also in the Netherlands for several um, uh, companies. I think this is an important uh, 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 figure in the report because what it shows is that we always talk about business as a kind of one, one group which is all, all the same, but there are really big differences between different sorts of uh, um, uh, businesses. So you see on this slide, for example, that the agricultural, the forestry, the mining, and the water supply sector, they really uh, uh, have a relation with nature on a specific spot. So. It says here soil, it's really uh, at a place uh, uh, on, on the earth. And the manufacturing industry, the food industry, construction and paper and fibers, they depend on the resources coming from, uh, from, from other places. So, and also if you uh, go uh, towards the, the activities, uh, you see that the impact uh, reduction um, uh, in, in agriculture is differently from uh, uh, the, uh, the opportunities, uh, uh, for example, in the um, uh, food industry or the uh, recreation uh, sector. This is the model uh, the, the PBL adopted, uh, and it's developed by the Erasmus University for the different company strategies, uh, uh, the different strategies companies take on their sustainability journeys. And what you see here is four different types of uh, businesses. Inactive, reactive, active, and proactive uh, businesses. So the inactive businesses, they just comply to the rules. And of course, if they can uh, um, uh, implement cost reductions, they will do that uh, too. The reactive businesses are a little bit more awake, you could say. Uh, especially for uh, reputational uh, risks, and they want to avoid further, further regulation. The active are much more focused on strategic innovation and opportunities, and the proactive um, are looking also to the societal challenges and the co-creation. So now the key question, of course, is in the Netherlands, and a lot of times you hear that's a, a reading, really a leading country, a lot of front, front runners. So how many, what kind of percentage would you expect uh, uh, in the Netherlands to be, let's say, active or proactive? So is that 80% of the businesses? Can I see maybe some hands? 60? 40? 40, ah, thanks Joseph, you're quite optimistic. 20? Yeah, 
Well, but let's let's stop here. Either you're very realistic or you're not awake. One 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 of both. It's 18 percent. So it's only 80 percent in the Netherlands of total business. Uh, not sorry, not the total of the group of 35. Uh, that really is active or proactive. The majority is not. And so that, when I read that for the first time, I thought, oh my God, that's, that's not a good situation. This slide shows the strategies you can uh, um, uh, implement to change uh, uh, the business case. So, and the size of the, um, uh, the arrows indicates uh, uh, what is most likely to happen or where do you have the best uh, uh, opportunities. So you see, going from reactive to active, that really is the change that, that, that you see most in, in business uh, developments. Uh, going from inactive to, uh, uh, to reactive also a little bit. And the, I uh, um, uh, personally, I like the going from active to proactive and searching for the collaborative uh, there. So this is what in, in the report is called the bubble where you want uh, things really to change. And there are several triggers and incentives uh, to do this. It's going from consumer demand to stakeholder uh, in, uh, engagement, finance, the financial sector, and uh, government uh, incentives. And to be honest, the one I'm missing here is uh, business itself. Uh, uh, I think business associations can please can play an important role, but also uh, a business-to-business -business, uh, um, uh, interaction. So if you buy something from another business, also that can be a trigger for change. Now something about government roles in engaging uh, a business. So four different roles uh, a government usually uh, uh, implements to, to, to work with business. It's going from endorsing and partnering the more soft kinds of uh, a government action to facilitating, including uh, incentives and mandating, uh, uh, posing, uh, posing new rules. And in the report, you find what is effective for the different categories of businesses. And it's not very um, uh, surprising that if you're an in inactive company, a little bit of soft policy is not going to work. So for, for the um, uh, the inactive of companies, you really need regulation and facilitation and incentives. So, and I, I think for the Netherlands government, this is the major uh, um, uh, a message because the government in the Netherlands shifted uh, uh, its policies from the more mandating uh, types to uh, the softer types uh, about 15, 20 years ago. So in the report itself, there is a, a little bit more explanation on all the pluses and minus. But I think that the message here is uh, you should diversify your policy uh, to business interventions much more uh, in the Netherlands. And probably this also goes for a lot of the other countries. So the conclusions are, uh, yes, there are many uh, nature inclusive uh, activities of companies in, uh, in the Netherlands. At the same time, you see that they are struggling with identifying uh, risk and integrating it in, into all of their decision uh, uh, making. Uh, uh, the number of uh, uh, companies that really are active uh, 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 from a kind of an intrinsic uh, motivation is not, not, not very uh, uh, high. And uh, that's why governments, they really have to develop a more uh, diverse policy portfolio. So if you would allow me now I go I take off my hat of stand-in for uh, uh, Mark van Oorschot and um, uh, uh, want to share uh, uh, two more uh, uh, developments with you. This is the, uh, 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 the wheel with the levers of change we published uh, last year as a natural capital uh, coalition uh, uh, in a narrative that we developed uh, in, the, in the government dialogue. And the narrative was about uh, um, how do natural capital approaches help policy uh, developments. And uh, you see here seven different levels of change, creating support and insights, support first movers to develop uh, solutions. So this is a little bit soft kind of policies, foster stakeholder participation, co-fund change, bringing in uh, uh, money, integrate it into uh, uh, natural capital, uh, into all policies, promote and support standardization and change the rules of the games. So here you also see, I I think a mix of different policy uh, 
uh, actions that you can uh, implement. And behind all these levels of change, there are examples presented. Uh, there are more than 50 examples in this uh, brochure. Uh, at this moment, we work on an update spe specifically for the biodiversity uh, policy. Also, Peter already mentioned uh, uh, business for nature and the key policy asks uh, uh, there. Uh, if you go to the survey, uh, you will find uh, these uh, 10 uh, suggestions as a, f as a kind of a starter for, for the survey. When you go through this, you also see that it's a quite diverse policy uh, uh, menu, uh, uh, you could uh, say. So I think both within the uh, uh, um, uh, government dialogue on natural capital and the survey Business for Nature released uh, this week, you see that, uh, uh, that uh, awareness that you really need a broad uh, a suite of uh, potential actions from, from governments. So the report of the PBL is coming out at a timely uh, a moment, I think, to inform uh, uh, Kunming uh, decisions, but also it's good to know that there are already examples available where governments can go to or they can uh, 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 um, get inspiration to see how they can improve their own policy uh, menu. That's it. This is Mark. You see his email address. So for the difficult questions, just use your phone and send him a message. So thank you, Martin, for a, a great presentation, and uh, and thank you, Mark uh, Van Orshot, who, who who was really not able to come here today. But now we heard that uh, we have two reports available that that is summarizing the the experience gained within last ten years or so. So uh, now I would like to. Um, turn, turn to you and, and get your Slido's ready, get your uh, um, phones ready for the Slido questions and, and, and answer these questions. In the meanwhile, I would like to invite our guests. So we have now uh, uh, representatives from government, also business and biodiversity platforms and businesses. We heard that we need to col collaboration and uh, let's see what is the follow-up from the presentation here uh, heard and, and how, how we can really scale up. I think it's about individuals. I like the Peter White's uh, title of uh, ambassador. I think we all here are ambassadors and it's about how we deliver the message to the outside of this minority that we are representing as we heard. So. Terhi Lehtonen from the Finnish uh, uh, Ministry of uh, Environment and Climate, please, welcome. Uh, Stephen uh, Dickinson from the Total Company, please. Uh, Veronica Veneziano from the Business in Good Company in Business and Biodiversity Platform in Germany. Good work for the long time. Uh, Javier Gajón from Spain, um, the Minister of Ecological Transition, uh, Claire Varé, Act for Nature in France, and Mr. Timo Lehesvirta. Okay, thank you, and some applause for the, our guests here. So let's see some Slido uh, questions. Martin, did you pick up something for the first question? What are the effective business engagement strategies? Yes, uh, I think that uh, the role of governments need to be addressed. 
and regulation. What do you say, Martin? Is it on? Yes, now it's, it's on. There was the, the, the covenant uh, 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 remark that um, governments and business need to uh, work together. So, and this reminds me of the, the Green Deal the EU now is developing. Uh, um, it's my understanding that the Commission is going to present a Green Deal, which is different from the approach taken in the Netherlands, where a Green Deal is a kind of a covenant signed between government and the business community. So, and that has proven to be very effective in, in the Netherlands to move things forward. So I'm just wondering whether this is a model for Europe and whether the Green Deal in Europe also should be a Green Deal that in, I think it's 100 days uh, uh, that they take for it. Uh, that it's not 100 days that the European Commission is creating a Green Deal of themselves, but a Green Deal they sign with business representatives. Good. And I think we need to think bold now. It's about ambitious, being ambitious. Let's go for the other uh, question we're having there. What is the most challenging in engaging business? No challenges at all? Scale up. Yes, I definitely agree. CEO commitment, talking about the same language. At least in fin Finland, we had the, this problem uh, talking about the same language. It's a really important issue. And we know that uh, uh, most of the companies that we have been able to involve are the large companies. How to uh, get, uh, how to engage small and medium-sized businesses. How to be pragmatic, smart solutions. And demonstrate the value of the biodiversity. It's good. Anything, Martin, do you pick? Yes? Okay, so uh, maybe we go the third one. And how government could support. This is also food for your conservation later on, but uh, let's get this uh, last question to you. What is the role of governments? Are we doing enough? Good. Reporting. Mandatory. Financial support, support at general level, pre-procurement. Good, thank you for this. I think that is time to go to the uh, discussions here and uh, I would like Terhi for you to start. Thank you. Thank you, Kristina, for allowing me to start this conversation. And thank you, Martin, for, for the great presentation. And there was a lot of, and, and also to Mark uh, van Orschot uh, through you uh, for, for the analysis. There was a lot of inspiring ideas and good leads for us policymakers at national and at EU level. I found this typology of companies um, uh, inactive, so majority being inactive or reactive, but that we also have this group of front-runner uh, proactive companies. Likewise, uh, the PBL analysis on the triggers of change was interesting, how transparency 
uh, plays a key role in standardized information and, and how there are different ways governments can engage and potentially trigger uh, change uh, and, and also the key role for financial institutions. Now in Finland, uh, the government has supported business engagement in biodiversity, mainly uh, through a joint platform with the Business uh, Organization for Corporate Social Responsibility and the Finnish Environment Institute. And, and the corporation has been uh, a lot on uh, building capacity on biodiversity and ecosystem services um, and, and the, the global goals. And uh, since 2014, we have engaged with 50 uh, companies. We have built uh, um, a set of uh, case studies or best practices, which we actually have also available in English. In case you're interested, you can ask uh, Christina for, for details. Um, and they, these companies come from different business sectors and, and we consider them our, our front runners. And we, we recognize that this, what we have done, uh, is a, is a good start, and it's, but it's not, uh, it's not enough to, to be a game changer. And like Kristina said, we need to scale up. And like she said also, we need to be able to engage also the, we have to find ways how to engage also with the small and medium sized uh, enterprises. But now I would like to turn to, to our business colleagues here on the panel and Stephen. Uh, I would like to ask how in your company policies, how did you engage on biodiversity uh, uh, and on, on the IT targets and what uh, worked the best uh, and to what extent there was a governmental or, or governmental action was instrumental and what could we learn from your experience? So, I, do I actually do my screen thing? So good, good morning, everyone. Um, my name is Stephen Dickinson. I work for Total. For you who don't know Total, we're about um, we're number four in oil and gas in the world. 100,000 staff present in 130 countries, and have a turnover of about 220 billion. Um, so we're what we call big oil, uh, as such. So thanks for the opportunity to be here and talk about two things today. Um, our main um, biodiversity engagement processes within the company, and I'll illustrate those with some tangible examples. And then I will talk about um, some of the key drivers that have uh, led us to scaling up biodiversity best practices uh, in our company and in our sector. Um, really, in terms of uh, the first question, the main biodiversity engagement processes, it really happens at three levels uh, for, for us. Internally, foremost, at corporate level, that's where I sit, uh, setting the biodiversity strategy um, at management level. So that means engaging with XCOM and our CEO to make sure that we build that biodiversity strategy and develop that company culture as, as such. It's been around since the late 1990s in total, and formalized in 2005 with our first biodiversity policy and has been up, upgraded ever since uh, through uh, industry best practices. Um, the f we see six underpinning key principles for any biodiversity strategy, which are up here on the slide, um, to demonstrate success of having a complete biodiversity strategy. Um, in terms of other engagement processes that happen uh, at corporate level, it's also about setting new public biodiversity commitments. Our, our recent win is the Act for Nature initiative. If you want to learn more, there's a web link. You can download what we do there, We're transparent. Uh, it's also about developing partnerships uh, to provide further capacity to uh, de uh, deploy the commitments as such. We can't uh, do these things alone. It's also uh, strongly about uh, continuous staff uh, awareness raising around reconnecting our staff with nature. You know, we live in boxes in the morning, we, we go in a car, in a train during the day, we end up in an office, we're disconnected largely with, with nature. And so we, we put quite a bit of effort around that. It's also about technical training and capacity building. Uh, I, I spend most of my time doing that, in fact. Um, Internally, it also happens at the business unit level. So these are the guys and ladies who have to deploy and implement. So mainstream all the fancy ideas that we come up with at corporate level. And we, we accompany them, we engage on a technical level so that they're able to operationalize um, all the fancy ideas, like I said, 
at a, at a site level and ground level. And that means engaging technically uh, with them uh, on biodiversity matters and helping them develop the partnerships at a local level and of course engaging with local stakeholders, communities, um, NGOs, but of course the regulator plays a key role. We also engage externally. Uh, I'm doing that today with you. And this also, uh, you know, uh, relates to engaging with a whole array of uh, different organization types, whether it's our sector associations, IPCA, IOGP, which has a biodiversity and ecosystem service work group that influences what, how we do things and, and we influence it also. Um, so this is scaling up uh, um, best practices within our, our industry. It's also about engaging with multi-sectoral industry associations like the Cross-Sector Biodiversity Initiative, which brings oil and gas, mining and finance sectors together. Uh, to develop biodiversity best practices, as well as multi-sectoral associations like EPE, and you know they've delivered things like the Act for Nature initiative that you've all heard about. Non-business engagement too, engaging with our partners, UNWCMC is a really important one for Total, um, but a whole uh, set of others are there, you know, IUCN, CBD, the former BBOP, GBPB, uh, the NatCap Association, the French Normalization Body, etc. Now, in terms of more tangible examples and contributions, at least we see these as contributions towards the IHC strategic goals and targets. There's a whole array here. Um, I won't go through them. We don't have time. We have only a few moments. But uh, maybe some, some easy wins is the Act for Nature initiative. That was a contribution towards strategic goal A or target five and our m most recent best win for biodiversity aspects. We're also working and engaging with the French normalization body to develop um, an international biodiversity standard for organizations, public and private. This is, this is really an important one. Um, also being a, a first mover at times for Total, where we've committed recently through Act for Nature to sharing all the biodiversity data we generate. Some of this is generated at 4,000 meters in depth where scientists cannot afford to go and fetch information. We retrieve that and put this on the global biodiversity information facility platform for academia to use. It's also about sharing some of our uh, rapid biodiversity screening tools. Uh, we develop these with our peers and, and um, uh, other partners like the University of Oxford. And we will use these tools and make them open source for anybody to use. Um, another important win uh, is the engagement that we're conducting uh, through the industry association uh, with CBD. We're part of the engagement team uh, to develop the LTAM, <coughs> which is the mainstreaming document that will couple uh, with the post-220 GBF. We also have launched uh, Nature-Based Solutions, a business unit, so profit-making entity, uh, to provide services on NBS internally into Total and externally that aims to finance uh, up to $100 million a year um, um, Nature-Based Solutions that are, are carbon solutions, but provide and deliver strong societal and biodiversity co-benefits. In terms of the second question, this was about drivers and scaling up biodiversity good practices uh, within our industry. I think it's fair for us to say, and this is possibly just because of how Total is structured, that the extent of governmental initiative being instrumental in changing our practices has been unfortunately rather limited. And we see this as a missed opportunity. There's two reasons for this. The f first one is that our first milestone in our company, and this is set in our, in our charter, is compliance. And what happens is that we and the regulator focus on the permitting and the compliance for monitoring, for example, and that leaves very little room for best practice introduction, okay? The, the dialogue is not geared for that. And so what you'll see one of my suggestions. But there are some exceptions, and I'd say certainly France stands out as, as being a, a, an important one. Um, examples of opportunities for scaling up voluntary good practice across our sector. It's all the stuff I've mentioned previously. I won't repeat that. Um, but it's about voluntary biodiversity uh, commitments, voluntary no-go in, in specific, uh, specific areas, also sharing data, developing standards, et cetera, et cetera. We, uh, we, we do these things, and we hope that these can benefit our peers, but we have also, let's be honest, benefited from our peers and scaled up in that way. Uh, important benchmark is Shell for us, uh, and we have uh, benefited from uh, their front-runner role at times to uh, influence how we do things too. Um, just to wrap up, time is short. Some key learnings for us, for, for us clearly business and sectoral voluntary approaches, absolutely key. We're agile and able to act quickly. Act for nature, it's like having kids, nine months uh, to deliver. And um, 
but for, for us, this has been instrumental. And the, the, the key to success was that it was CEO-led. The top dog needs to, to buy into this. We, we're all for natural capital. Uh, we've piloted. We, we're, we're a natural capital member. Uh, but let's not forget the basics. The, world's, the world is not there entirely yet. Uh, let's not forget the basics around having biodiversity mitigation hierarchy mainstreamed across all national regulations. Okay? This is absolutely paramount. Um, we c let's not get ahead of ourselves too fast. We have to work on several fronts, but the mitigation hierarchy, without that, we're going nowhere. And uh, having a, s a clear common set of rules, the biodiversity standard AFNOR is doing, we see as absolutely key. This is why we invest a lot of our time to, to we see also that as an, a means of upscaling um, both private and public sectors in terms of biodiversity management. And we have to win people's hearts. That's all about the awareness raising. This is why I said I, we spend a lot of time about awareness raising and reconnecting people uh, and nature. Um, this is paramount. Let's not forget the role of finance. Finance usually s brings the cash and you know they tell us uh, jump and we say how oh, high, really. Um, it's, it, this, is, this is how the world works. Humanity has decided that we operate in a capitalistic environment and, and finance is absolutely key for, for setting the tempo. And my last message, um, this is for, for, for us very, very important, is having that joint business and government biodiversity engagement platform, one that remains open uh, and allows for opportunities to be identified, such as developing feasible practical, simple biodiversity good practices for business that are co-constructed with business, not government working in a silo, not business working in a silo. A safe place for us to talk and exchange and further these things. Certainly, the forum CBD is created uh, at, at the local, national, regional, and, and uh, international levels is, is, for, is really important. I think they have a key role for that, um, for furthering that and you know, I, helping us identify the, the, the right incentives to scale up biodiversity uh, good practices. And that's it for me today. Um, I, I'll hand it back to you, and I will be asking uh, Veronica some questions. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Steve. Yes, please continue, Steve. So, Veronica, the floor is going to be yours in a sec. Uh, I'd like you to address the second point about the drivers and, and the, the cooperation that's required between government and business so we, we get the right synergies. And so if you could address that, it would be fantastic. And the second question for you is, is um, a more inspirational question where you know, you're going to project ourselves to uh, 2030 and try and share with us some examples of how companies and governments have worked together, you know, where we essentially got things right. Uh, throughout the world to achieve that nature-inclusive solution, solution uh, to lead to that healthy and resilient ecosystem that will continue to provide its services to humanity. It's a pretty long-winded question. It's loaded, and there's lots of things in there. So what was the secret to that recipe that worked? And, and you know, how different would the world be compared to today? Thank you. Um, yeah, just five minutes, I think, I have. So I'll try to be as fast as possible. Uh, maybe it's easier to start from the beginning and to um, explain a little bit what Biodiversity in Good Company is. Uh, it's a business initiative. It was um, created by the German Ministry for Environment and for the international cooperation in 2008 during the COP9, uh, I think it was in Bonn. It was in Germany. So basically the business, there was a, a very clear uh, message for the business. We have to engage the business. So this platform was created to... Um, yeah, just to bring together uh, business stakeholders and to um, commit on biodiversity. The um, company, or the, it's actually an association, it was at the beginning funded by the German ministry and it became like a, an independent um, association, basically an NGO, uh, 2011, so um, three years after. And we are now um, a platform, an exchange platform, um, and we are financed or supported by membership fees. Our members are companies. Uh, we work with companies in all different sectors, actually not specifically on um, agriculture and food, because in Germany it's already covered, so to say, the sector from other initiatives. So we really address from mining industry to um, services uh, to all different types of uh, automotive as well. So um, a few years after, we started 
another platform because we wanted to address and to uh, target all the stakeholders within the business scenario. So the German, um, German uh, ministry um, supported us with a project which is called Enterprise Biological Diversity 2020, which is actually the platform I am, uh, I've been coordinating the last year. And it addressed not companies, but business associations and um, chambers of commerce and NGOs. So we are basically working at, two, at different levels, trying to bring everyone together in the same room. And I think the, probably the secret that um, made us possible to keep working and to address in a very direct way um, to support mainstreaming of biodiversity within um, the business scenario is that we created a space, like a safe space for companies, for business associations, for all the people who are interested also for so to say, uh, parties that are not really on the same page, uh, like also for NGO and uh, Nature Environmental um, Organization to just get together, to have a place where they can speak loud, what's their troubles, what their problems, what their good practices, and how they can find a ways, different ways to collaborate together. So um, we organize basically like knowledge transfer, we organize conferences, we organize, um, well, of course we have newsletter and this kind of thing. So the goal of the initiative is really to give as much input as possible, to collect, collect as much input as possible from a German perspective, but also national, international, and to mainstream. So um, what I can say is that, of course, with some uh, stakeholders, it works much better. So with companies, we are actually having in a couple of weeks our annual meeting, and I will also be reporting about the dense and extremely interesting week I had in Madrid. Um, so the companies that are working with us um, commit to integrate biodiversity measurements within their reports, of course, every two to three years, and they are extremely active. But I see that in general, if you talk to business associations, for instance, they're still kind of slow. I still have this um, challenge to make them understand how crucial, actually, biodiversity is. And this is part of their plan, well, because they're very concentrated on climate, of course, but actually it's holistic. So this is the approach. So if I have to think, uh, and if I still have one minute to think 2030, um, yeah, I hope it can, this, this is just, I've been really thinking a lot these days. What can I say? What cannot? not I say. But I was thinking, of course, for our um, initiative, we work a lot on supply chain um, with all the companies. And so my <laughs> perspective was, um, first of all, I think it's important to just to combine two elements. The first one is soft skills. So to understand that um, um, biodiversity has um, to be integrated at different levels between companies. But on the other hand, we need really hard tools. So we need collaboration, we need um, governments to work in a more um, coordinated way, interdepartmental projects, like biodiversity cannot be divided or separated from one ministry to another. It, it has to be a focal, a focus, it has to be a central, a major issue on the national agenda, I think. Um, and so, long story, make short, I wish we could have a zero nature loss supply chain for just a few sectors like automotive, energy, food and, land, uh, food and agriculture, and um, yeah, the 2030, this is um, to have such type of supply chain, it's basically business as usual. Yeah. So this is, uh, I think I have to pass the word to Claire. Um, so in your platform and in your project, um, how did you engage biodiversity and did your company contribute to achieving the IHG targets and uh, what has worked best? Thank you. Um, just a few words to present EDF. Um, I'm working for EDF Group, and, uh, which is an integrated energy company and uh, we are in all areas of energy business, meaning uh, generation, transmission, distribution, trading, energy supply and energy services and we are working on 23 countries around the world. Um, and we have uh, roughly 170,000 employees around the world. So to answer to your question, Verinka, uh, we, um, we had um, 
what is the journey that we had um, on biodiversity. We released the uh, first biodiversity policy in 2006. Um, and uh, this policy um, should have uh, been applied uh, on the world group, but in fact it uh, applied only on the headquarters, uh, which is already a big company in itself. Um, and in 2016, uh, our CEO um, developed a new group strategy, and he added to this strategy six uh, CSR goals um, on one on biodiversity. This CSR on biodiversity states having a positive effect on biodiversity. So with something broad, uh, we can embrace all business units of the company. Um, by business unit, I also integrate entities like um, uh, uh, the first one that we will have direct effect, of course, but also other entities like uh, human, human resources, communication, um, accountability, uh, strategy department, so which are a bit far from this kind of considerations. So in 2019, um, OCO, so this year, OCO request, requested for the first time uh, each business unit um, which, is, um, which has um, an impact on biodiversity to, formally, uh, to formalize its contribution to this uh, biodiversity goal. This is the first, first year, so meaning that at the end of the year or early next year, um, we will have to report for the first time uh, to the XCOM on this subject. Uh, which is quite a, an exciting exercise, but uh, it's uh, something new. Uh, why have, uh, has he been able uh, to take uh, this, uh, this commitment? Because a um, few years before, we took the opportunity uh, to engage in two, um, in two external uh, propositions. The first one came from the French government, uh, when he uh, released his national biodiversity strategy and requested each actor in France to engage also. So, and he requested each actor to engage with uh, a letter of the C signed by the CEO. That's what we did in 2014. And the second um, engagement that we took, uh, which came from uh, an external body, was the Act for Nature commitment. Uh, it was in last year, um, and we joined um, this initiative uh, with 65 companies, um, and uh, we committed uh, on biodiversity. Um, joining external initiatives are very important for us uh, because you not just uh, commit to something, but you join a group of practice um, that will um, regularly meet uh, to discuss on this question, on the and to meet on the time along the time is very important for us to progress. Yeah, and then we come to the second question, to which is: To what extent do you think government initiative was instrumental in changing your um, practices at business uh, level? And if you can share some examples. So, um, what is the most easy for us is to um, take any external opportunity uh, to take it um, in order to progress uh, according to our goals. So, Act, on, Act for Nature, for instance, has been one of them, as I just explained. And uh, to join into Act for Nature um, has uh, oblige us to speed up the implication of all subsidiaries in the group. Um, so we will meet uh, next year, early in January next year, for the first time with all um, biodiversity reference of the group and to draft um, um, a smart action plan at the group level. Um, so, and to transform also our commitment in something more, sm uh, in something smarter. Uh, I mean smart like, uh, 
uh, measurable, achievable, and everything. Um, it's not smart to do the work. Um, something very important is to make each entity responsible um, to identify how biodiversity issues, how they deal with uh, biodiversity issues inside their activities. So we need the implication of all business units. So we need to find um, Alice in some specific department, which is not where it's not obvious to deal with biodiversity. And we need to find this allies, um, especially to, uh, for them to explain us uh, what are their mindsets, uh, what are their concerns, and how they think, uh, and to put biodiversity into the right um, area in the um, in their uh, department. What is very important also for us is to find group of peers, internal or external. This is the most effective way of progressing. And uh, the, um, we do it uh, with uh, also externally with many uh, platforms and also with NGOs, uh, national or international. And uh, the last thing but not least is um, I think biodiversity can be inspirational uh, to also change the way we organize or we work internally on the subject. Um, if we look at a biodiversity or ecosystem, we will find there all ingredients uh, to uh, develop uh, collective intelligence into an organization. So this is, we are just at the beginning of the journey there, but I think it's something very powerful. I think we need to continue, please, yes. Yeah, so um, I will, rec I will um, ask you, um, Javier, one uh, two questions. Uh, first, um, how should we utilize the policy instruments available or from other policy fields to accelerate mainstreaming of biodiversity? How can government best support businesses to scale up their nature inclusive solutions? Thank you very much, Carl. Uh, thank you very much, everybody, for allowing me to join you <laughs> to this panel. It's a pleasure for me. Uh, before answering the questions that Claire made, I think that we have to, uh, to focus where we are now we are i think that we are everybody is agreed that we are facing what sun has called the uh, environmental emergency in the world with uh, three principal items that are climate change uh, loss of biodiversity and of course of course uh, the disponibility or, or availability of natural resources we are facing these uh, three elements and we are in a real uh, crisis that we have to face all together now. And this is because it's an emergency, because we don't have time enough and there, there is not, uh, there are only one plan A to face it uh, in, in a good manner. Uh, talking about uh, biodiversity, it best has remembered us in last May where we are. We are worse, uh, very worse uh, than we thought uh, some years ago. Uh, the, the loss of uh, biodiversity is much more bigger than we have never uh, thought. We have been now facing that uh, the loss of biodiversity is the, the biggest that we have had in the geological register. And this is a, a real uh, voice of alarm. We have uh, to make all what what will be in our hands uh, to face this uh, challenge. But uh, although this uh, IBES report has uh, shown us uh, uh, the problem, also give us an opportunity. And it's clear when, it's clear when, when we, we uh, this report remind uh, us that uh, we have time to recover, to protect, and to make all the actions to to recover our biodiversity, our landscapes, our uh, environmental services, the ecosystem services that are 
crucial for our presence in the world. And there are many uh, things that we can do, uh, for sure. Uh, one of them is to improve uh, circular economy as part of a global solution to face these three points that I have mentioned. Because uh, to, to improve the circular economy will allow us to make a better use of natural resources, uh, to uh, disappear or at least uh, see if, uh, to be uh, uh, mean or the, uh, our footprint in the world because we will uh, use the, the waste uh, that we will produce coming back into the product system and closing the gap obviously to make a circular economy and for sure nature-based solution will be a key element in the development of this uh, circular economy. Also, we have uh, the environmental assessment in the ways of impact and strategic assessment to integrate all the activities that we can make and to take into account all these uh, elements uh, that will be necessary for this uh, target that we will have to, uh, to, to follow up. So, uh, the policy instruments and the regulation tools that the government has. Uh, in, in this uh, field's mention are really very relevant and uh, lead us to a systematic transition in which circular, safe and sustainable climate net neutral production and consumption models on natural based solutions become competitive. That this is the, 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 the key element that all the enterprises will have to, to do. And also, uh, I would like to mention, as an example of uh, Spanish uh, government support uh, with the Biodiversity Foundation that has been a part of this, uh, of the arrangement of, of this uh, meeting. Uh, in Spain, we learned some, uh, some time ago, uh, the Spanish Business and Biodiversity Initiative uh, that works hand in hand with a selected group of more than 25 companies and strategic partners they have been working for the last at least uh, eight years and they have uh, developed important uh, documents and they have integrated uh, nature-based solution and uh, uh, ecosystem approach to the day-to-day uh, -day working. Today we have the pleasure to, to release the second triannual uh, balance report of this in, uh, initiative that we have on the table and I think it's also outside in the, in the hall, uh, that shows uh, many, uh, many uh, best practice uh, that has been developed in this, in this framework, taking biodiversity on board for the business of these companies. Uh, this report is a modest uh, contribution of Spain uh, showing what can be achieved uh, when the business sector takes a step forward and paves the way for better considering biodiversity in their activities. Uh, as I said, uh, we can find copies of this report in the beginning of uh, this talk. Thank you, Javier. The next question is inspire us. It's now uh, 2030. Share with us some example of how companies and government have worked together throughout the world to achieve nature inclusive solutions that lead to healthy and resilient ecosystems that continue to deliver services to humanity. What was the secret of scaling these practices? How different would the world be compared to now? Uh, thank you, Claire. It's a nice question, and I think that uh, I, I don't know if it's inspiring or really difficult to answer. I can imagine what we will do tomorrow, <laughs> so I think it's, it's, it's very difficult to imagine what will happen uh, almost uh, 10 years uh, ahead. Uh, obviously, uh, I would like a world when 
where all the nature-based solution and the biodiversity will be well conserved, well preserved, and well restored also. And I would like uh, to see a world where these questions will be plenty integrated in the in the core of the of the business and in the core of, of all the companies. Uh, instead, uh, their size that they will be big, or small, and or medium companies. Uh, I think that uh, biodiversity, as some of you has mentioned, and I'm sure because we don't have any opportunity, I'm sure that in 2030 all these companies will have in the core of, of, the, of their bodies plenty integrated nature uh, and biodiversity. Because as I mentioned, I think that there is not plan A, uh, another plan than, than we have. Uh, there is no plan B, plan C, or plan D. We have a uh, short time to, to face and to, sh to solve the problems that we are facing. And I'm sure that in, in 10 years, if we don't uh, if we don't have been be able to incorporate all these questions in the in, in the in, in our way uh, of uh, work, uh, the world would be much more uh, worse than now, obviously. So, I'm optimistic in in this, although maybe in a pessimistic measures, but I'm sure that we will have this uh, this new framework. Obviously, uh, all business practice will have to take into account these uh, these questions. We have a time strain, so we need to continue. A couple more minutes for the UBM and uh, Timol. Yeah. Well, now I have uh, another two questions to to Timo Lajespirta. Sorry by the pronunciation. If, if we yeah. <laughs> uh, the first one is, is uh, in your company policies, how did you engage biodiversity and did your company contribute to achieving the AG targets? Thank you. Um, UPM is the international forest company. Uh, the main raw material is wood. We use a lot of it. Uh, one timber track to the mill in every 45 seconds, 24-7. So, high wood volumes. Um, the main question is how to use land. And uh, that's the question I'm bringing with me when I'm working in, in UPM and try to find the right answer. The question is about wood, which is in the middle to compensate fossils. Then we have water, quality and quantity, how to protect waters. Then we have forest as carbon sinks and climate issues. Then we have life on the earth, biodiversity, how to maintain and enhance biodiversity as a part of sustainable forest management. And then we have people around us, local communities and other stakeholders. So uh, our strategy is a uh, holistic ecosystem service approach um, for land use questions. Uh, we source wood from private sector and then we own land in Finland, Uruguay and the US. And most of the wood comes from private sector, but uh, company land is very important, not just to uh, uh, take part of the wood from those areas, but to develop best practices in, in those company land fields. Uh, we started biodiversity program, company specific biodiversity program 1998, uh, where the target was to maintain and enhance biodiversity as a part of sustainable forest management. Um, indicators were based on comparison between natural and commercial forest lands and, and uh, through that work, we found uh, the right indicators what to follow. Uh, last year, we were ready to publish our new commitment and initiative and target, which is now the newest corporate level responsibility target 
and its net positive impact on biodiversity by 2030 in European land in Finland. The question is about half a million hectares area. Uh, how, to, how to achieve that? We are working hard with researchers. We are developing uh, indicators to improve them, to, to find the best monitoring and measurements, uh, how to create numerical data from nature. We have 22,000 different forest species in Finland and we can't monitor all of them separately. We have to have uh, some other indicators to know where we are. Uh, with whom we have been working with, uh, with researchers, with NCOs, with forest owners and other stakeholders and authorities, but not very much with government. We have been alone uh, in, in this process. Uh, we have not have experience to uh, sharing information very much. And we have been working too much in, in silos. And uh, somehow I see that the main message would be that we have to break those silos today. And uh, if I go to the next question, to 2030, <laughs> the time is running. Uh, the most important and valuable word I have seen today is uh, hope, what we saw in, in, in WWF presentation. Um, have you ever had hope in silo? I think no. And uh, that's one message to me personally today. Uh, then if you continue to Terhi, uh, I have two questions to you. So you have been working uh, in very many different <coughs> policy fields. Uh, with climate issues and uh, sustainable development goals and circular economy. Uh, what are the uh, uh, elements you could take from those areas to, to biodiversity challenges, how to mainstream biodiversity based on your exper experience from those, those other areas? And then the second question is where we are going to be in 2030? Thank you. Super. I, I'm going to be very short. In fact, I think the first question was quite well answered by Daniel uh, Kaleha and uh, Mar Marco earlier. So the mainstream or, or the lessons learned from climate policy, I think they both uh, mentioned something that I would have wanted to say as well is the role of transparency, the MRV. So monitoring, reporting uh, and um, uh, verification and accounting. Um, so that we have learned from climate and the role of setting targets. Um, and for the rest, I would say that from climate policy, uh, we have had tools like cap and trade. We have set performance standards. We have experience with lead markets uh, in terms of setting renewables targets or setting car standards uh, to develop and, and um, spur technology. I think s some of those could also work um, for us in, in biodiversity. Um, but to, and, and I would stress uh, again the importance of exchanging good practice, uh, both as businesses, as governments and businesses, and then uh, internationally and tracking progress towards those targets together, uh, collectively. Um, but I think from, from the, so just to draw um, the, the most important things to do f learning from the climate experience is to uh, set meaningful goals that's at the international level and then translate them to the European and national level and to develop the, the key standards, the mandatory MRV policies as soon as possibly and, and probably at the, at the EU level. Now, I, I'm going to be looking quickly to 2030. To, uh, if I, uh, I think uh, we've already been there with Javier and Veronica. Um, I'm thinking that this is now a, a, a class of graduate schools of environmental management uh, graduates, and, and we're looking back at 2019 and, and, and looking how we managed to then turn, bend the curve and turn uh, the loss of biodiversity and I am asked to explain, and what I will tell is that what happened was that first it started with few front runners. There was a forestry company setting targets to be biodiversity net positive um, by a certain date. Um, 
uh, as, as well as a, an energy company uh, with the same um, biodiversity positive goal. There was agri-food company setting standards for their supply chain to be deforestation free, abandoning de de destructive practices, requiring increase increasing soil carbon and biodiversity. There were retail chains piloting, providing information on products, cap natural capital footprint to consumers. This all happened around the time global community and countries uh, were, uh, came together in Kunming in COP15 uh, COP and agreed uh, a new biodiversity framework with concrete and ambitious biodiversity targets. Now, the financial sector was ve got very active in, in those negotiations and that, at the same time that the country is committed to the post-2020 framework, the large institutional uh, investors committed to proofing their investment and, um, and moving from um, activities that were counteracting the targets. In exchange, the governments also promised to um, uh, finally stop the harmful subsidies. It proved that those front runners were able to meet their, their um, targets earlier than what they thought. Uh, and also the EU uh, member states agreed harmonized mandatory accounting standards and targets for member states which were then translated to diverse policies including some tax instruments, some at national and at European level just to speed up the transformation of the economy. And although no one could really believe it in 2019, um, like Javier already said, the companies had at their core uh, the, the, their impact on biodiversity. And in 2030, as we know, uh, climate neutral and biodiversity net positive are the norm of making business. Thank you. So, uh, so applause to our guests here. And uh, there's lots of experience. And now... Uh, on my behalf of the Finnish presidency, I will make sure that the, we, we, we are hearing you. We will get this message to the available for the all member states of European European Union. So thank you for all. <laughs>